I've got a lot of stick for not jumping. I can take it, I've developed tough, tough skin to these things. But I'll do it one day, you know, I'll do it. I'll, perhaps I'll celebrate a, a 50th birthday or something, you know, and do it then. Have you marked your books, Mr Banks? You're not coming down yeah. with us. Yeah, you should be here as well. A bit of pressure on you. A bit traumatic leaving a very good aeroplane, isn't it? <laughs> okay. At the end of the day, I really want, I really want you to make the most of it, okay? Leave the aircraft, count to four, put a big spread on. Get your head up and you get yourself on, a, on, on film, okay? I've been doing that, what's the first priority once the parachute has opened? Check, check, check it. Check it. And what are you looking for? Hole in the round and three holes. holes. Okay, big, round and beautiful. And you look and you check whether you do one or one thousand jumps. That's the first thing you do. My dad was furious. We had a huge argument. He wouldn't let me do it. But mum said, well, you're going to do it anyway, so <laughs> there's, there's no point in trying to stop you. Like, they were scared I was going to die, and, oh, no, you've worked so hard all these years, and you're going to die now. I don't want it. Just yeah. Come on. But you've got to turn into the wind because it's okay. going down. Take care. Just hop the as far as the parachute jump's concerned, I've always wanted to do one. I chickened out of one about ten years ago, before I got committed, and uh, I wasn't going to chicken out again. Can't explain. Maybe it partly it's because I bottled out one time, and I want to see if I still would. As he was going up, Bob was just such a... He's such a laugh, the instructor. He was so funny. It looked so easy and it was such a nice day. It would have been so easy just to say, take me up, I'll jump. Forget the training. We're looking perhaps at seven or eight hundred pounds, which, which will go a long way for, uh, on different projects, you know. And of course we're benefiting the, the Mayor's Appeal, the Hospice Appeal. The future. You go to your games lesson, you get registered, you bring your kit, and you take part in your games. Now, Miss Ash's been seeing you tomorrow about it. There's a letter here that will be going home to your parents tonight. Right? It will be in the post, and they'll get it first thing in the morning. And I suggest that you forewarn them that they're going to be getting a letter from me. Is that clear? Sir. Sure. Can't hear you. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Sure. Right, on your way. Is anybody else there? Send them in, please. You're the last one now. No, Jonathan. Jonathan, Jonathan right, sit down. Jonathan, just go out a minute. I'll ask you to come in in a second. Sit down, Andrew. Sure. What's this biology no homework produced? I was doing all my copying up, sir. You were doing all your copying up, so that's why you've not done your homework. Once we're on the plane, it sort of hit home to me exactly what I was going to be doing. And I began to get very nervous. And this thing got higher and higher. But when he opened the door, I was... Then, then it, it was really bad. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> go 
thought that the strut and I was t totally disorientated. I didn't. I, I ended up thinking that I was upside down. But then the parachute opened, and uh, that was just the most amazing sensation. Just a sudden rush, noise, disorientation, bang, quiet. And I just looked round, and I shouted out as loud. I mean, it was just just sheer exhilaration. See all this wonderful landscape, it was just amazing. When I came down, I don't know if you know, but my mum went running after me because I didn't get up straight away. My mum was there, she's not a girl. She's running through all these cow patch. I was out of breath, I was sweating. I had a, an adrenaline rush that I've not had for you know for a long, long time, and that's you know why I was so exhilarated on the ground. I was gibbering. Oh, pays me fifteen quid. I want another go. Brilliant. Can you remember what it was like? I can't remember anything. All I remember is. Coming down, and I... Hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I shouting all the way down. Because it's just so good. Yeah. Bird hanging around when you're part of it. Like, like, pull your toggle down. Pull your toggle down. You're like, do you pull it down? I'm like, he was going around. Like it said, pull it down. It was that quick. Hello. Oh, thanks, Barbara. Thanks, Barbara. Hello. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um. It's about uh, Sean Edwards. I'm, I'm going to do that now in about uh, 10, uh, 15 minutes. I'm just writing it up here now in my dinner hour. Yes, he's been, um, he's been left out by, really, from the England squad. Well, in addition to <coughs> teaching at, uh, at Cowley School, life gets very hectic because, of course, they have a lot of other jobs as well. Um, people will often hear me on a Saturday afternoons on BBC Grandstand. Uh, I write for Today Paper, various articles and so on against Wales. So really you could be talking about somebody who's not even uh, in the side. Yes, I've spoken to, uh, to Sean. He's not so happy, but uh, um, Mal really is saying that um, he wanted to put Schofield back to stand off and he didn't want Sean Edwards sitting around on the bench, so he brought some youngsters in. Which is a fair enough point, but I can understand Sean Edwards being upset. He is the top try scorer. I know you, don't I mean, you yeah. are totally disorganised, don't you? Yeah. So what are you going to do about trying to mm. organise yourself? I mean, the thing is, that, that what worries me is that you've been, that basically they've said you're lazy, right? I'm, yeah. I, I've known you three years now, and I know that you're a clever lad. And you know you're a clever yeah. lad as well, don't you? And that really, if, if somebody said, based on ability, how well would Bob Peel do, I would say he could easily get B's and C's at A level, if not better. Yeah. Based on this, you're going to be lucky to get an E. We can anticipate that they're going to be very skillful. Talk to each other when we're on the pitch. Yeah. Now we've got a squad of 15. If anybody gets tired, we're quite easy to take people off. I want 100% effort from the word go. Okay. Work hard. Work for each other. Talk to each other. Keep your eye on the ball. Okay. Watch carefully, they'll be very good on the reverse stick. What they won't anticipate sometimes is the fact that the ball will bobble. Right, go on Cowley, let's go. Right Jackie, um, as you know we've been carrying out this review of progress and uh, first half term and there's a couple of things come to light that we're, I'm a little bit worried about. Um, what happened yesterday morning then? I had an exam. So you did you not see Mrs Bishop in advance? No, I, I didn't see it. I, I went. I left the lesson on Friday because I couldn't do it. 
Oh, was it Friday? Yeah. You got up and walked out? Was that the test that you walked out of? No, or? she gave us the test to do again. I couldn't do it. So, I mean, was this, you, you got up and walked out, was it a protest or what? No, she said she wasn't going to help us. I don't know where I'm going wrong. Everything was against me. At all time low. And it lasted ages. I thought, yeah, it's just one of them days where everything's against you. I thought, yeah, it'll improve. It didn't. Still found going to school a pain. It's like I was waking up in the morning trying to find excuses not to go. I'm going. I, did, I didn't, like, slam the door or anything. But is this the sort of... I mean, what did you expect to happen? Before we broke up for half term, I was getting bored with all the reset lessons. Going over work done before and I didn't find it interesting. I was finding my stats lessons hard. How would you feel if you were Mrs Bishop and one of your students got up and said, I can't do it, and just walked out? Mm, she could have asked why. Did you give her the opportunity to ask why? Yeah. She said, so at the beginning of the lesson, she said, I'm not going to help you all lesson. I couldn't tell what had gone wrong. Right. So, uh, can I repeat, what are we going to do about it? First of all, I think that the very first thing is, you must go and see Mrs Bishop and apologise, right? Secondly, you've got to work at this. You, you know, there's no, you can't get away from it. It's an A-level subject, it's hard work, right? Uh, and you're going to have to, to, to work at it. What we'll do is, you've got the exams immediately after Christmas. Mm -hmm. Sit the exams, and then we'll sit, have to see how well you do then. Now you've got probably more than most people. You must, for your own sake, succeed. Because you may not get a second chance. You know that, and I know it, don't you? Right. So you must succeed. So some of the other people in there, to whom success is not quite as important. Not quite, not as important as it is to you, but don't let them deflect you. Please, for your own sake. All right. and the inventor of the incredible Lightfast system. Go right there, pass with Lightfast. Ray, who's Gordon? It's called Changing Times. Gordon, it's a story of a very, very useless person who is sent back to the beginning of time to change things and to cause a few more disasters than there actually are. And the reason he, he's sent back is because he's actually in the control of aliens from <laughs> another planet who, uh, who watch disasters from Earth live on TV. Gone! 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 Seventeen and a half. Oh, what a terrific idea. Tortoise shell. Get your lines right. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Hi, baby, baby. Get me a sandwich. Get me an ashtray. Get me a product from one of our sponsors. And get me 15 million more views. And make it snappy. da 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 Yo DJ pump this party! What do you mean no more disasters? How can there be no more disasters? The whole history of Earth is one long disaster. Yes, but Mr Tyrone, sir, the people there are getting friendlier. Isn't it worth trying, Jula? Isn't it all a wild dream? Isn't it worth trying? 
can make those wild dreams come true. All right, stop there. It, obviously, we've got to have had the right time for you to come on, and you can't just come on and stand in a semicircle. The whole universe is peaceful. The whole universe is sound asleep, tucked away in the little beds. And I've got the sole rights to the only planet that gets it wrong. The only planet that Turn makes look at that makes a <laughs> bout of life. And you want me to film a sick pussy cat? Cause I've got all the answers Put your faith in me A little bit of love and a little bit of luck I'm gonna change history I found the perfect person Just got to set him free A little bit of love and a little bit of luck I'm gonna change history And you may think you've seen disasters Think you've seen them all just you wait and you will find out what I've got in store. Cause I've got all the answers. I have all the my mum's never been strict about it. She'll ask me, and I do answer her honestly. If I say I've got homework, she'll say, well, don't you think you better do it before you go out? When we come after Christmas, I'm going to have to start buckling down, I think, and get some work done. Da -da 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 -da. I had a strict course working. I was one day late and I got a, I just scraped an S in my effort letter. It shows how important coursework is. But things like mass coursework, I owe him like two courseworks and I'm not done and, and he's not said anything. I'll do my GCSEs and then I'll probably be sick because I don't think I'm going to get maths. I mean, I've got a private maths tutor which comes to my house. Julie tries to pair me off with absolutely everybody. She always wants to be my matchmaker. Neil's the one with the Skoda, but I think it's beginning to bother him a little bit. The fact that it's bright orange doesn't help matters either. <laughs> You've got it on inside out. That's inside out. You That's it. Turn that way. Oh. I like this bit. Thing. I like this bit. You're obviously an expert. I like this bit. Um, you know, messing around, you know. Probably do. Yeah, okay. you Attention to detail. Yeah. Now I'm going to put it like this, and I need a pin because it needs holding. Yeah. You want your tie it over the top? Mm -hmm. Cheers. 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 You see the sister? No, he's driving down. So I'm going to drive down the front, and there's two places outside: the mayor's roller and uh, and uh, his. Uh, I think it's a BMW or something. Eh? Nice to see you. Welcome again to Cowley. Nice to see you. Okay. Hello. Do one with Bobby as well and do a group thing here. Well, it's ten minutes, five, ten minutes. She just met us there, the one of the girls. She said you should try it sometime. <laughs> the parachuting. <laughs> Yeah. Well, they did it, and they all got down safely. You'll be very pleased to hear. Without any injuries. Well, yes, without any injuries. <laughs> Come in. Okay, safe journey. Hi, nice to see you. Okay. How are you? Nice to see you. Thank you for program for the You've been worried. You were worried. No, no, not worried at all. Michelle, <laughs> Michelle. Uh, <laughs> hey, I should have phoned you up and come here. No, 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 it's okay. Please come on in. Okay. Mary, Mary. Okay. Hello. 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 Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please sit down. Madam Chairman, Your Worships, Mr. and Mrs. Charlton, staff, parents, boys and girls. First of all, may I welcome you to this special occasion and thank you all for the contribution you have made to the life of the school during the last 12 months. We all have one thing in common, to do our best for the pupils of Cowley. 
Recent changes have pushed schools into the marketplace, into greater competition, into a quasi-industrial setting. The business jargon has crept in. There is talk of clients, customers, productivity, human and physical resources. Now I realize with devolved budgets, we have to manage our money efficiently and effectively. We have to monitor expenditure, and we cannot and should not be prodigal. We don't want Cowley to be left on the shelf if there is a mad stampede for opting out. But on the other hand, we have to consider very carefully what is in the best interests of the school, its staff and its pupils. So at our first business meeting of this new term, we had a full and frank discussion about opting out. But we're at the stage where we feel that we don't know enough about grant-maintained schools and what becoming a grant-maintained school might mean for this school. And I want to assure parents that parents will be consulted every step along the way. Me and Vicky had an argument yesterday. Nicola and Vicky had an argument yesterday. He just seems to be Vicky. <laughs> she just rubs people up the wrong way. I mean, everyone's saying, you fancy my boyfriend, and you was looking at him, you've been spending too much time with him, and she just come up to me and said, come on, let's go for a walk and sort it out, talk it over. And we did, and we were friends, like, in five minutes, and it's all forgotten. And there's a lot of the youngsters here, I've no doubt, will, will not know me. They won't have seen me play, certainly not. Um, and I, I get a lot of youngsters who actually come on the schools. I think the parents are glad to get rid of them for a week. And we had, I had one little 12-year-old that came up to me and he said to me, he says, are you Bobby Charlton? And I said, yes. He says, when my granddad was young, he used to watch you play. <laughs> was a former head of music at the girls' school and the prize was given by her family. It goes to Gareth Twist. Well done, Gareth. Thank you very much. Are you want to go in the music business? I think so. Yeah. 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 Well, you're pretty good, I think. You've had a good start. Thank you very much, Jane. Good luck. Next, we have Outstanding Contribution to Sport and our winner is Philip Walsh. Hi, right, Philip. I'm scared of failure again. That's what it is. I'm scared of failing again. To find out more, see you next week at Cowley High.